Hey everybody, welcome to Ryan Cinematic Obsessions. Today is gonna to be different than the previous episodes. We're talking about one film today, and it's gonna be under my favorites series where I talk about all my favorite films, about 250 films that I have written down that are all my favorites. This is one of those, this is a top 20 film. So today we're gonna to be talking about David Mamet's 1997 neo-noir thriller, The Spanish Prisoner. Okay, The Spanish Prisoner stars Ben Gazzara, Felicity Huffman, Ricky Jay, Steve Martin, Rebecca Pigeon, and Campbell Scott. Campbell Scott is actually like one of the last build um, out of all the headliners, but he has the most screen time and he is the main character. Um, basically, Campbell Scott plays kind of a brilliant guy who is hired by a business to help make it money and he has invented this thing called the process and basically the process is a mathematical code to do with business that will help the company make money and they're very secret secretive about it they are very protective over it ben gazzara plays the head of the company and they want to make sure that this process stays with them and that nobody will come and get it out of Campbell Scott's hands and so basically the movie starts out with a meeting them talking about the importance of the process and what it means to them and how they're going to protect it they're at a um, they're in the Caribbean and they're having this meeting and Steve Martin plays a businessman full of mystery who shows up and kind of befriends Campbell Scott and kind of starts putting little seeds of doubt into Campbell Scott's um, character's brain about what the true motives of the company are. So that's as far I'm gonna get into talking about the plot of the movie um, because if you've never seen it, you definitely need to do yourself a favor and see this film. Um, basically what you have is a almost like a north by northwest Hitchcockian um, film with David Mamet's like Mamet speak and I'm a huge David Mamet fan so like uh, you know all his little trademarks of having all the characters you know they call it Mamet speak it's like very realistic ways of talking but when, without like they get to the point of whatever they're talking about it's very realistic, but it's also not realistic in a way because sometimes you watch it and you read his stuff because I have some a lot of his stuff, like his books too. And it's realistic, but it's actually things that may actually not be said in real life. So as a character, they're straight and to the point. And if you've seen other films that he's, um, you know, wrote, uh, you know, Glengarry Glen Ross, The Untouchables. Glengarry Glen Ross is actually one of his plays and it is brilliant. I have my the book downstairs. It's always on like a coffee table that I have. Um, he's just so great with dialogue and storytelling. Uh, you know, between David Mamet and Aaron Sorkin, I always have a hard time trying to figure out who my favorite screenwriter is, uh, but they're so completely different that I can't really say one's better than the other. I kind of go back and forth. Right now, I'm in my David Mamet mode, so of course I'm like, oh, he's the greatest. Sometimes I'm in my Aaron Sorkin mode, and I'm like, oh, no, he's the greatest. But what I love about The Spanish Prisoner is that you really have no idea what's going on most of the time. And really, up until like the last 30 seconds of the film, you don't really know what's actually happening or what's going on. Um, you question everybody's motives and stuff like that. And it is such a great movie. Now, some people may watch it who are not used to seeing a David Mamet directed film where I almost like to say, you know, Samuel Fuller had like a, a reputation in terms of his films for being like a, some people said he was a, like an A, an A-list B movie director. Like all of his movies were brilliant, but they had like a low budget quality to them. And a little rough around the edges. That's kind of how I would say David Mamet's films are too. 
because there's some people who may see this movie and be like, well, the acting, um, you know, is kind of, I've heard people say, well, the acting is kind of wooden. The music's kind of annoying out of, and out of place. And it just doesn't feel like a big budget movie. First of all, it doesn't, it's not a big budget movie. And second of all, it's about the story. And I think that the actors, especially Campbell Scott, um, they do a great job with what the, the material they have, which is an excellent script. It's always been, since I've been like really into scripts the past like maybe like five or six years and screenplays, I it's one of my favorites. I would put it up there with like Chinatown as like one of the best screenplays. Um, but I also just realized that Campbell Scott is um, George C. Scott's son. I had no clue. But uh, yeah, The Spanish Prisoner has a really great like jazzy moody kind of score to it and it just really adds it really feels like an old film noir but you know it's a newer film so it's you know they classify it as like neo-noir but um yeah it's you know it's funny seeing sorry I'm just kind of going off the top of my head with this because I don't really want to do scripted talks about movies but uh Steve Martin, it's so funny seeing him as a non, it's not a non comedic character. In fact, he is a brilliant guy and he's very serious and he's very intimidating from the start. He actually, you know, he has that era, that aura of mystery around him and it's just intimidating, but you want to know more. And uh, I've recommended this movie to people for so long. Unfortunately, this movie does not have a Blu-ray, a North American Blu-ray release. I don't even think it's been released on Blu-ray anywhere else. And as of right now, the DVD is out of print. It has been one of my dream Criterion titles for a long time. So I hope that that's a sign that maybe we're getting some more David Mamet on Criterion. We already have House of Games, Homicide. So hopefully this movie is going to find its way to the Criterion collection. Because it definitely needs... A high def release and um, it's just a great film and that's why I wanted to kind of spend my time talking about it today instead of having like a full length episode which it's getting close to seven minutes so um, or you know it's over seven minutes so it's getting to be a full length kind of episode but yeah so this film like I've mentioned it does have a vibe of um, you know, North by Northwest, the wrong man kind of vibe that Hitchcock had in a lot of his films because Campbell Scott's character is trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Why is, are, is everything a mystery? What's all this craziness happening around him? And does it have to do with his process that he has created? So like I said, you are literally second guessing yourself and like wondering what the heck's happening the entire time every time a twist happens you're like what and then next thing you know oh my gosh oh man i didn't know that was whoa and then you're floored again and you know the movie starts off on the island it's in the caribbean it starts off kind of very slow pace which i love for for uh movies and then as the mystery starts to deepen there's a section of the movie, I think it's from like 45 minutes in until about almost, well, 45 minutes into the end, it is just every five seconds you feel like you're getting slapped in the face with like a new, like a plot twist or a new little nugget of information that um, you just found out. So I highly recommend this movie, guys, to every one of you who want to see it. You could probably get it fairly cheap on DVD on like eBay or even Amazon. They might have it um, used. I bought my copy on Amazon like maybe four or five years ago. And up until that point, I had it on, uh, no, it was longer than that. Up until that point when I got it on DVD, I had it on VHS. And this is a film that I wanted to see when it came out, but uh, it didn't really have a big release. I remember seeing it up at Blockbuster all the time. And I just never got around to seeing it until it was like on HBO in like the early 2000s. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
see you next week. I took a couple weeks off. Getting back into the swing of making videos, I wanted to kind of refresh myself again. I think it, it seems good to do three weeks and maybe like a week or two off and then coming back for another three weeks or so worth of videos. But with that said is that I have more stuff coming this weekend. I have some Criterion stuff coming. I want to start showing off some of my Criterions. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit like, and leave your comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.